welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida, home to America's premier muscle car showroom, Hankster's Hot Rods, where we own and house anywhere from 65 to 80 vehicles at any given time. If you are watching the vehicle we are about to present to you today on any other advertisement other than Hankster's uh, website, which is hanksters.com, please be sure to visit our website so you can determine whether th this is in fact a current vehicle that we have for sale. If you are watching this on YouTube, uh, on ClassicCars.com, on Hemmings, uh, this vehicle may no longer be uh, available for sale. We own all of our cars, so you're dealing directly with the seller. There are no third parties involved. We are not a consignment dealership. We welcome all of you to visit Hangster's Hot Rods to look at the vehicle you might be purchasing. We encourage all of our buyers to come in person. Uh, Daytona Beach is a, a great tourist destination. There's a lot to do here. Uh, it's, it's a fun two, three day trip, maybe even a week long trip. Uh, come check out your, our cars for yourself. Uh, check out underneath. We'll take it on a test drive. Have some fun. Hangsters.com. And uh, if you want to reach us by phone, it's 386-944-9219. Enjoy today's presentation. Okay, this is the uh, engine bay of a 1967 Chevelle SS car, a real SS. This thing is a 138 code car, which means it has started life as a big block 396 uh, SS uh, Chevelle. <clears throat> it does have a big block in it now. Donnie will tell you the configuration. We know it's at least a 396. Uh, it has a, a double pump Holly on it with an electric choke, by the way. Uh, Edelbrock uh, aluminum intake manifold, oval port heads on it. Um, Standard style cast iron exhaust manifolds. Now I want to just put a set of headers on this. The motor appears to be, other than the intake, uh, really pretty much original, just the way it would have come from General Motors in 67. 14 inch unsilenced air cleaner on it. Uh, it has an electric fan on the radiator as opposed to a uh, shroud and a manual fan on it. So this is probably a much more efficient system than the uh, conventional system on it. It does not have power steering, but it does, however, have power brakes on it. You can see it has a new dual stage master cylinder on it with new associated hardware. It all appears to be stainless steel. It appears to be stainless steel. Um, no leaks present whatsoever on the top of this engine anywhere. Uh, valve pan covers intake, timing chain cover, absolutely nothing. HEI distributor with a set of uh, larger high silicone plug wires that appear to be uh, freshly installed. Heat still hooked up to the passenger compartment just the way uh, it should be. This does have a dual fuel line on it. It has a conventional uh, mechanical pump on it. Uh, Optima battery in it. Uh, no distortion whatsoever in the front of the radiator core support. There's a uh, uh, no indication that this car's ever suffered any uh, impacts or any trauma at all. Uh, horns in the front just the way they should be. Um, Semi-flat black on the fender wells. Your cowl tag is nice and legible and still intact just the way it was put on in 1967. Uh, packed in insulation underneath the hood. Uh, correct valve pan covers the way they were in 1967 when this car was released. We don't know the horsepower of this engine. It does have a fairly decent cam in it, so it's producing substantial horsepower. Uh, it's a great looking car. It presents itself as the, the engine that came out of this car in 1967, or came with this car in 67. even has a still washer bottle still hooked up and a washer reservoir. So it's a great looking engine compartment, a lot of originality to it, and we're going to go around the rest of it and show you what we can on it. Okay, we're going to present a 1967 Chevelle 138 code, a real SS car, the way it was in 1967. Um, gap on the hood on this side, that side, uh, very nice and linear, it mates up to the uh, fenders very nicely and up to the cowl area. Uh, no patina, eh, if there is any, it's so light I can't even see it or feel it on the uh, scoop uh, uh, accents on it, the chrome pieces that are there. Um, Anodized aluminum across the front end. Uh, everything lines up as it should. The grill is nice and clean. There's no dents or marks or anything from stones being thrown up through the years. SS396 designation on it. Uh, bumper alignment's very nice. There's also no scuffs or marks on the chrome at all on the front of this bumper. And no stones have come up through the years and whacked the front of it either. So it really actually looks very, very nice. Uh, your anodized aluminum ends here for the protrusion on the front fender. Very nice and clean, and the black accents 
uh, in the inside part of it, which are usually worn out, this is very nice and clean. The paint on this car is, we're going to call it a driver quality paint job. It's certainly not a show quality paint job, but it's going to be a little bit better than what General Motors released on his car in 1967, which would have been a plain lacquer paint job, and most of those were very, very thinly put on. This is a nice paint job, certainly better than it was when it was new. Going down the side of it, we got our SS396 designated flags, Corvette flags on it, uh, wheel lip moldings, rocker panel molding also, and there's no dents or marks from heel marks being whacked through the years. Again, you can look at the uh, gaps on this. Kind of a couple chips here that have been brush touched right here from the hood being twisted a little bit through the years probably, but uh, certainly nothing that you'd uh, address any further. Correct wiper arms and blades. They appear to be the correct style that were released on this car in 67. The dash is very nice and clean, and the padded area the same way. There's no uh, warps or deviations in it whatsoever. Trim around the front window, which, by the way, is a tinted front windshield. And I'm going to call it tinted glass on the side. I'm not sure, but it does appear to have a little bit of a tint to it. So it may not be. This definitely is tinted. Uh, roof, of course, is in excellent condition. There's no marks or scrapes or anything on it. Drip rail molding, very, very nice. And check this out. Look how the window, front window to the quarter glass, everything fits just as it should. Uh, can't feel any patina whatsoever on this chrome, which usually has some wipes, whiskers, nice and fresh and clean. Someone has just installed those. Those are nice and fresh. Um, door gap in the front, you can see, is nice and linear. Everything lines up as it should. Same thing with this guy back here. Nice linear uh, a door gap on it. Looking inside the car, uh, molded armrest just the way it should have been from the factory. Look at this. This still has the old uh, original uh, uh, tire pressure tag on it. Amazing. Um, door actuator, window actuator, nice and clean chrome on it. The correct style steering wheel for this guy, and check this out, still has the old rabbit ear Muncie shifter in it with the chrome ball on it, the way it would have been in 1967 when it was released. Correct style interior front and back, uh, seat belts in the back and in the front, you got them both parts here, front and back. Um, headliner looks real nice inside, dash is nice and clean, you can see normally these things have some deterioration on the chrome, from what we can see at least outside here as nice as can possibly be. The correct tack in the left corner here, um, the way it would have been as an option in 1967. Uh, good looking interior, nice uh, black fresh looking carpeting, the seats don't have any uh, curvature to them or anything, real nicely padded. Uh, looks like a nice car. Sills are nice and fresh and clean and shiny, door jams with your uh, VIN plate, which Devin will give you a good defined picture of, uh, still intact. Nice car so far. Okay, going down the side of it, uh, quarter panel, uh, everything's nice and fresh looking on it. There's no dents or marks or anything. A little dust there. Um, hat rack in the back, nice and fresh. Someone has redone it, it, it as it was in 1967 when it was new. Uh, a couple little small dinghies on this uh, piece of trim on that side. I can see a little tiny bit of a warble, but hardly anything. You're not going to see it in any of the videos and probably none of the still pictures. Um, let's see here. The um, wheels on this car are a set of 15-inch rally wheels uh, with the correct style centers on them. The short centers, they didn't come out with the uh, tall ones until 68, but it uh, uh, has a set of... Uh, White letter tires on it, uh, great looking car down the side of it. Uh, as you can see, everything lines up as it should. The door to the front fender to the quarter panel. Uh, the window glass is nice, nice fitment on it. Uh, going around, oh, Super Sport designation on the back here because that's what this guy really was to start life with. Uh, chrome around the rear uh, tail lights. These basils are really nice. There's no uh, patina whatsoever on the chrome. SS designation on the back of it here. Bumper alignment in the back is really straight and nice. And also the back bumper coincides with the front. No marks, scuffs, brushes, nothing. Nice clear uh, backup lights in it. Let's open this guy up. This lines up pretty nice too. The trim across the back that tie ties into the tail lights. Uh, real nice looking uh, trunk area in it. Uh, um, you can see everything looks nice and clean and, and nice and solid. Uh, uh, I don't see any place where anything's been uh, replaced in this, but of course you can tell a little better from underneath. Uh, jacking instructions on the uh, 
deck lid, new rubbers on the back, new rubbers on the door and the front too, which I neglected to mention. It's a really nice car. It, it has a lot of uh, a lot of originality to it. Everything uh, lines up like it should. Everything around your rear deck is the same as it was on the hood. Everything nice alignment. Power antenna in it. Uh, someone has installed that through the years. SS designation on the back. And going up this side, it's going to be the same as it was on the other. Just everything is really nicely fit. You can see your uh, wheel lip moldings. There's no dents on them. Same as the rocker panel on this. This side is the same as the other side. And again, check this window fitment out. That's really nice whenever you see a window that fits as that does. Same thing on this uh, drip rail. No brooms have whacked it through the years. Door gap on this side. Uh, really nice. And the uh, chrome on the door handle on the other side, same as this. It's just like new. Absolutely no, uh, no issues whatsoever. Set of uh, uh, Chevy floor mats in it. And again, you can see a, a better shot in the interior here. It does have a couple auxiliary gauges in the, uh, underneath the dash. Uh, everything on this car is a fresh looking car. It's a great color combination. Um, door panel on this side is the same as the other one. There's no wear or anything or no uh, places where the vinyl's coming loose off of the uh, hard uh, backing. You see the door edges are real nice. All your doors are nice and clean inside. Everything lines up like it should. Their wipes whiskers the same as the other side. Of course, we had a mirror on that side. We don't have one on this side. If someone even wants a mirror on the right-hand side, we can put one on. We do keep them in stock now because most of the people that buy these vehicles kind of want a right-hand mirror on it, whether it came from the factory or not. Again, look at this. It can't get any better than that fitment-wise. Really, really nice. Real nice. Back where we started with the uh, 396 flags on the uh, front of the uh, fender. This thing's a 1967 138 code SS car. That means that that's the way this guy started life, is as an SS car, which designated that it did have a, a 396 to start life. Uh, they never came with a small block on an SS in 67. Uh, uh, the car is a great color combination. It's black with a black interior, no vinyl top, solid car in black. Has a set of rally wheels on it, white letter tires. A big block Chevy motor, which Donnie will give you the designation of what it is actually. He'll try to figure out roughly what it is cubic inch wise. The um, car just has a real nice appeal to it. You know, it has a, a great color combination. All the uh, chrome, the trim, the software around this car is just as fresh as you'd ever hope to find one. Uh, we didn't see any indication of any repairs in the trunk area, but we'll get a better look once we get underneath it. Uh, these cars are hard to find. 67 is probably the most difficult and the most sought after uh, Chevelle. Everybody will argue that a 70 is, but they made a heck of a lot more 70s than they ever did 1967s. And these guys are very, very difficult to find, especially in this condition and this color combination too. And uh, it's available here at Hankster's in Daytona Beach. And we encourage everybody to come down and look at them, but Devin is going to spend some serious time putting, compiling all this data that we're generating for you, both video-wise and high resolution photo wise so that you can uh, study it and uh, any questions you have pick up the phone or call we'll be able to answer them for you if you need any further photos Devin can take you a more defined photo of a specific area that you have a concern about we're at Hangsters in Daytona Beach Florida and this is a car if you're in the market for a 67 you really should take a look at okay this is the uh, underside of a 1967 black 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 uh, SS Chevelle Really nice looking car. Uh, looks like someone's put a newer steering box on it, new pitman arm, uh, new idler arm with the Zerk fittings on it, the heavy duty sway bar across the front. Disc brakes in the front, you can see the rotors and the backing place and the old associated hardware calipers. Everything is absolutely nice and fresh. Uh, the engine has been out and completely refreshes. Everything's freshly painted on it. Conventional starter on it, not a gear reduction starter. You can see at this point anyway, we have no leaks on the engine, the bell housing, or the transmission, or the tail shaft. At this point, it's a muscle car. You'll have them shortly. Um, the floor pans on this uh, appear to be original. I can't really see any places where they've been uh, uh, completely redone. There's uh, a little work done here to clear the uh, shift rods and everything for the uh, transmission, M21 Muncie. But other than that, the floor pans themselves in the front, in the center part, and in the rear all appear to be original. Cast iron exhaust manifolds, uh, which were the original style that came on this car, are still intact. I'm going to call these two and an eighth 
primary pipes coming off of them. The uh, frame itself, box section in the front, there's no uh, indications of any deterioration whatsoever on it. Original brake lines are actually still intact on this guy and so is the fuel line. The original fuel line appears to be uh, intact on it yet too. Parking brake still hooked up and functional. New drive shaft, you can see it's freshly painted with new U-joints on it. Someone's put a uh, new uh, uh, reverse uh, light actuator on it. The frame itself is a C-channel frame that ties the two box channel frames front and back together and it's really nice. There's no deterioration whatsoever on either side of it. A couple little marks from where it's been jacked up through the years and bent up just a tiny bit. Uh, it, it's just a very, very nicely done solid car. I mean, it, it, it doesn't show any indication of uh, any repairs on the floor pan area or the, uh, the frame area. Everything is nice and fresh looking on it. You can see the uh, Two and an eighth inch pipes transition into two uh, Flowmaster style mufflers, and I'm going to call them two and an eighth out also. A nice sound and exhaust system. Flowmasters and those turbo mufflers that they have in today's world are really good sound and really great sound and exhaust system. Box swing arms in the back. Look at this F41 suspension. Uh, whether it came that way or not, this is the way this is right now, and it does have an F41 style sway bar with the correct style. Um, boxed in swing arms. Everything is uh, structurally reinforced on this F41 suspension system. Really a stout looking set of heavy duty shocks in the back that are relatively new. Forgot to mention there's new shocks in the front too. The uh, springs in the back are nice and taut yet actually they appear to have been replaced. Uh, 12 bolt Chevy rear. Also again no, uh, uh, no leaks on this rear end at this time. At this point in time there are no leaks in the engine. The transmission, the bell housing area, the tail shaft, or the rear differential. I don't know the gear ratio in this. Donnie will have it up in a spec sheet. It'll tell you whether it's posi and what the actual ratio is. He's checking every one of them out now. Drum brakes in the back to coincide with the uh, discs in the front. Uh, the exhaust system comes out and terminates just the way it should. Uh, turn downs coming out uh, in front of the uh, rear bumper. The uh, drop downs in the quarter panels appear to be original also. They even have their uh, original drain holes still uh, uh, nice and clean and clear on them. Transitional piece across the back is really nice. There is a little wrinkle right here in it. Uh, it looks like somebody hooked a chain to it or something at some point in time and pulled it. But other than that, got a nice original looking undercarriage on this guy. You can see that it's not some rot bucket that's been glued back together again. You know, the uh, floor pans, the, the frame itself, you can see how nice and clean everything is. It's just a very nicely uh, uh, done 1967 Chevelle, a real SS car in, in triple black. So take a look at it. It's at Hangsters at Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the workshop of our uh, 1967 SS Chevelle. Uh, black, 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 black. Uh, horn. It does not want to agree with us here. It is not working. Or is not working. Tack is working. Uh, let's try turn signals to the left. You can see it behind the tack here working away just like a chid. Turn signal to the right. We're doing this job over here. Uh, we have water temperature just starting to come up started this guy and there is the oil pressure just nice and high just the way it should be uh, fuel Jeff gave us a little over half a tank or half a tank a little over a quarter of a tank here and the alternator working just the way it should too so uh, let's see the clock is not working radio radio will work radio is gonna work I can hear it scratching away there uh, wipers. We want to try wipers. Let's try wipers. Wipers are functioning as they should. Okay, I think that's it. The car seems to go down the road straight. No hands on the wheel. We're still going straight. Let's try uh, uh, brakes, no hands. And it stops straight, too. Shift 
nice and smooth. The way this horn's not working, usually, usually work in these cars. Uh, nice car, the headliner's uh, nice and taunt in it. The uh, sun visors are nice yet, they're nice and original looking. Uh, there's no marks on the dashboard. The uh, chrome on the dash, which is usually deteriorated pretty badly in some of these 67s, this is still very, very nice. It's, uh, it's in excellent condition. Turn this guy around and give him a little shot here. Straight as an arrow. Can't get any better. 